Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Harlequin here today with tonight with Fear Gorm, and this is the SC Reddit Open number 10 here on Delta Quadrant. This is going to be game four between Wes and Chetikus. And just as I have been hoping and praying in the pregame talk, uh, Wes, who is normally a random player, has spawned as Zerg. And so we finally get to see a Zerg versus Zerg match in today's tournament. And uh, Wes, as we've known, is a very, very dynamic, random, sort of unpredictable player. So I'm eager to see what he can do with Zerg because we've definitely seen our share of, of uh, really skilled Zerg players here. So, you know, I've already kind of talked quite a bit about Zerg on Zerg, but, you know, uh, Fear Gorm, what have you seen with these kind of matches? And I don't know, what the heck are you thinking? Because frankly, it's really hard to predict what Wes is going to do anytime. <laughs> I mean, I, I would call for standard Baneling Roach, but with a player like Wes, you can just never really tell because he's proven that his control and uh, of his units just opens up so many doors for him that a lot of players don't really have. And I think um, Wes, I, I when we saw that dropship micro, it just opened my eyes to the kinds of exploits you can do against your opponent when you just have more APM than him or, or just like more in battle control. But um, a Zerg versus Zerg, I think, is not a matchup he wants to deal with. It's just so volatile. One Baneling going off can just like change the whole match entirely. And um, he knows that Chattakus is main. Chetikus' main is Zerg, so this is not the kind of matchup he was hoping for, I'm sure. Yep. In my And so, <clears throat> living up to my worst nightmares, I kind of want to see this just because I like mirror matches, but I'd love to see it. And they're very early pool by Wes here. Well, not very early, actually. I guess he's right on right on track there. But um, I was going to say, I would love to see this game live up to my worst nightmares and just have a mirror match of Bane Links. And just see Wes's micro really shine and see if he, if he can stand out in that, because uh, it is up... Uh, it's two to one for Chetikus versus Wes at the moment, right? So Wes definitely has to win this match. Uh, so we'll see where this is going to go. But, you know, it, like I said, I'd love to have a nightmare match of just annoying Baneling Micro, just because we haven't seen anything like that yet tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, I, I mean, not we shouldn't discount Chetikus, obviously. He has excellent, excellent control, especially with his Lynx rounds are just so, so clutch. And his decision-making, I think, is some of the best we've really seen in this tournament. I mean, he knows just the amount of Lynx to send. He knows when to drone. So um, that two-gate defense was really, really impressive. I mean, if the guy can hold off a two-gate like that, he can hold off a lot of yes. early pressure, pretty much anything that you can throw at him. Um, so uh, I, I, I wonder what Chetikus is... Uh, what he favors in the matchup like this. He's throwing down an early spine crawler actually. Early roach, as a early roach spine. Horn. Yep. He's yeah, not even roach. not even building any not even building any lings or anything like that. I mean he's got his first two, but that's about it. Oh yeah, offensive spine crawler. I didn't catch that. I thought that was his own spine crawler. Wes has his own spine crawler, but Chetikus also happened to have his spine crawler in Wes's base. Uh, that's always kind of fun to do. Now this was the other thing that I, I often like to see is I would love to see one player go Banelings and one player go Roaches and see if the Roach player can defend against the Baneling player because that's uh, been historically a hard thing for Zerg to be able to do and that's kind of why all Zergs went for Banelings early on. But uh, we'll see what, what who's going where because it looks like uh, we do have Baneling from Chetikus and we've got Roach from Wes. So time to see if the new style Roach defense will actually work against kind of the more traditional Baneling bust. Yeah, and I think the the thing is, and um, when you go banelings, I think you're sort of relying on your opponent to be worse than you. Uh, I, I think it's sort of a situation where if a player, if you take players of equal caliber, I think generally the Roach player will win, um, just because with a good positioning and everything. Like, look at this: West positioning right toward the front has a queen in position to transfuse or just pick up more space if necessary. I really like that. It's going to be sort of baneling proof, and I mean to be honest. So I, I think it sort of depends on your opponent not being very, very good. But we will see. I mean, Harlequin, as the um, Zerg player yourself, what do you favor in a ZVZ? Well, I was going to say that um, I, I love the Roach defense. And what I think we're going to end up seeing with Wes here. Now, Wes is getting my attention. Not to say that I'm rooting for him because, you know, I love all Zergs equally. But you'll see that Wes is going right for a fast layer and he's got a second gas up. He could easily go and just get, you know, four Mutalisks out very quickly. Meanwhile, having this intense defense against uh, a possible Baneling bus because... Uh, I don't know why he decided to break his wall like that. He had such a beautiful looking wall. I was going to say having a row of uh, having a row of roaches and a queen in the front of your base is kind of like the Terran equivalent of having you know a factory and a barracks as your wall. It's just very bust proof. But uh, luckily he's spotting these like little sneaky ninja banelings in the back Whoa. of his base, and he's kind of trying to clean all that out. Look at this position of the banelings down in the south. They're right behind this uh, terrain object, so they're really hard to see. Yeah, very, very clever positioning, and they're going to run in. They're not going to do too much damage, though. One already goes down. He might kill off two drones, but I don't think so. Yeah, there we go. 
So um, not the the greatest use of his banelings, and I think now that his wall is back in position, I don't think they're really going to be a threat. But both players uh, teching um, to layer uh, pretty early, but Wes is going to have the advantage because he did get his layer up more quickly, and Chedic is throwing down a ton of spine crawlers. Oh That's my god! That's a really odd move. I think he's. I I don't think this is the right move. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's misconstruing that. Um, I think he's thinking that Wes is going to be going hard roaches, and he kind of is. But really, Wes is is, is almost done with his spire because he texts so quickly. Wes is going to be in a good position to get maybe three or four uh, mutas out if he starts saving now. But uh, he doesn't really have the econ at the moment to make mutas. He's got just about 300 gas, but he doesn't have enough minerals. So pretty soon we'll see some mutas maybe, but here comes the push. But uh, I guess maybe I can't blame Chedicus because this roach push is going to get really uh, have a lot of trouble with that amount of spine crawlers, even though it's kind of an absurd amount of spine crawlers. Yeah, and he did make quite a few roaches. I would have liked to, to, to see him just actually invest more into the mutilus because there's not really any anti-air defense um, sans one queen, but... Uh, Right now, yeah, I, I don't. That was a nice micro of the roach back there, but um, oh, wow, that queen snipe is actually massive. <laughs> that means there's literally no anti-air available for Kedekis right now, except for a spore crawler. Single spore happen. crawler. Spore crawler is just terrible. Yeah, it's you know, yeah, you know. Um, yeah. But still, we haven't really seen, uh, oddly enough, Chedicus has got the production on the Mutalist. I don't know if you're looking at his income, but he had about 400, 400 gas and minerals, and now, of course, obviously, he's five, 600 because he's got six Mutas coming. But that's kind of what I wanted to see Wes do, and he kind of lost his advantage because he never did. In fact, look at Wes, just going for a Hydralisk den, not even going to try. Yeah. He's going for a Hydralisk Infestor and just kind of hope to kind of defend that way, I suppose. Yeah, and uh, it, yeah, it does seem like a, a Western throw, sort of throwing away his advantage because he did sort of have uh, the tech advantage in the, in the case where it, it sort of shows, I mean, if you're good with your roaches, you don't need to be too afraid of banelings on a map like this where you have just a small choke to defend at your ramp. But uh, right now, we see that the needle is going to cause a little bit of trouble, but um, hopefully once these hydralists get out, it won't really cause too much damage because there are a few spore crawlers in position as well. Yep. Yeah, this is going to be tricky. Like you said, you nailed it. Now, oddly enough, Wes, of course, found the the sweet spot in the back of his base, but uh, enabled to kind of harass the buildings. But here comes Chedicus now with a whole bunch of kind of normal, uh, exactly the same number of mutilists that he should be having. And he's just going to kind of poke around the base, but he's got this nice, Wes has got this nice triumvirate of uh, spore crawlers here, just kind of defending from all corners of his base. And it's going to be really hard for the mutilists to poke in, but they can always pick off the wandering overlords. That's uh, always good to be effective with those things. Chedicus, in the meanwhile, expanding, uh, finally able to deal with a couple of rogue uh, roaches that were in his base. But uh, now we've got Infestor and two Infestors and a handful of uh, Hydralisks. That's a wonderful counter to Rogue, uh, rogue Mutalisk because he's going to be able to lock him in place and just kind of shoot him down. So hopefully uh, he'll be able to take care of that. And oh. a good little transfusion there. Yeah, I really like that play. He needs every Hydralisk he can get right now because um, his his Hydra count is not overwhelming enough to really just stomp on Mutas and just engage him very directly. So you see that he's sort of ha having to play it uh, very, very close to his base. Very, very tight base construction from both players. Keeping everything very, very compact so they can defend it more easily. But uh, right now, I'm not sure. Does he know that this expansion is going up? No. But he might suspect that it's going up from the Mutalisk count. So... Um, Right now, uh, Wes, he's sort of in a do-or-die scenario. I mean, he needs he needs a lot of tech. He needs to also get Fungal Real to deal with these Mutalists. And uh, he's taking down his back rocks, but my question is, can he really defend it? He doesn't really have all that much mm -hmm. mobility, and he hasn't been spreading his creep all that well. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be a real problem for him now. He does finally have 75 uh, mana on each Infestor, so he's got two... Uh, fungal growth and you know a reasonable amount and fr frankly if a whole flock of needleless came in here right now he would destroy them so he's in a good position that way uh, it's always good to be unattackable by mutalis in fact if he were to press if he were to push right now other than the spore crawlers uh, Chedicus would have a lot of t uh, a lot of trouble defending because as any Zerg mutalis player would know you never want to defend with mutas they're kind of bad at defending when people attack you with stuff that kills mutas they're good at harassing though so you can already see Chedicus is getting just a small line of 